10 months. It's a longer time jump than I had planned. Hello and welcome back to Blossom Sandwich Sews. My name is Yvette and today is going to be a massive catch up about what I've been up to for the last 10 months, what I've got going on right now, and a little bit of what's coming up. So yeah, let's get straight into it. So the biggest thing is that my husband and I launched our sewing organizer app, which is called Stash Hub. Um, it's amazing, I'm not gonna tell you too much about it, but um, I'll put in some screenshots. You can catalog your fabrics and your patterns, you can create projects, you've got a record of every project that you've made as well as things like, um, you know, your notions, you get sewing stats if you dare to look at them. Um, yeah, so there's loads of stuff on the app, challenges, if you're interested in joining in sewing challenges. So yeah, there's loads going on on the app. Um, and we launched that November last year, which just so happens to be 10 months ago. So um, yeah, I think I can definitely put down my absence to that. Um, so we're at stash underscore hub over on Instagram. So I have been over on Instagram, on Stash Hub and on my Blossom Sandwich account um, continued through the last 10 months. Um, but yeah, so that is what we've been doing and I'll put links down below if you haven't heard about the app yet or you haven't tried it out. Um, but yeah, it's really, really exciting. It's going really well. And the massive, massive news is that I have recently, like really recently, like this week, left my job, my sensible, normal job, uh, being a scientist um, at the Cancer Institute in London, and I am now working full time on Stash Hub. So hopefully I'll be able to bring you a lot more sewing content and like Stash Hub related stuff as well, because you know, there's loads of stuff that needs to be done, like lots of tutorials and stuff like that. So yeah, let me know what you want to see from me. Um, and yeah, so it's going really well. It's really exciting, but kind of a scary time. Um, and I want to show you what my colleagues bought me as a leaving gift. So um, in my, my job I had the most amazing like team of people that I worked with and they bought me like the most amazing gifts so one of the gifts that they got me was the Simplicity Bias Binding Maker and I was just like blown away I was like how did you even know that this existed because like none of them sew and also I was like you know I think it's bold to buy uh, like a, a present in somebody's hobby niche when you don't know what they've already got. So I was just like, this is amazing. And I said, how did you pull this off? And they were like, oh, well, we messaged Doug, my husband, and then uh, he didn't know. So he messaged Natalie, who's my sewing bestie on Instagram. So yeah, it, <laughs> it all comes back to the sewing community. Um, so yeah, I've had a little play with this so far, but let me know if you want to see more about this because yeah, it's really fun and it's really satisfying. And I love a bit of bias binding and not having a flappy facing to deal with. <sighs> um, so what else have I been up to apart from Stash Hub and wildly quitting my job? Um, so last month, Doug and I, because now I get to drag Doug to lots of sewing events now that he's kind of part of the sewing community running Stash Hub with me. Um, so Doug and I went to the Sew Me Sunshine sixth birthday party. Um, so that was really fun and um, obviously I ended up buying some stuff. So I'm going to show you what I got at Sew Me Sunshine. Um, it was really lovely uh, day and I always love to see Harriet. She's so lovely and so fun. Um, so I bought, I was being very good and then right at the end I spotted this fabric in the remnants bin. Um, so, but it's quite a big remnant. I think it's 3.1 meters. Uh, of uh, this viscose twill and I just love the colours. I think the orange will look like really good with my hair and the green and the blue, you know, I'm a sucker for green and blue. Um, and it's a really nice weight and I just thought it would be so perfect for autumn. Um, so what my initial idea, my current idea, is to do the chalk and not shea dress. Um, but I need to see, firstly, if I've got enough fabric for that, I also need to twirl it because it is kind of fitted at the top. Um, yeah, so, so that's sort of in the works. And also I need to figure out if I can, because it's got this white sort of stripe, 
if I can cut it out in a way that that looks good. But yeah, that's really exciting. And because the Shea has got lots of buttons all down the front, um, Ethel and Joan was also there. So I used that opportunity to pick these amazing buttons. I've called them um, Olympic marbles in my stash hub because they've got gold, silver and bronze in. Uh, and I thought those would look really good with this fabric, especially with, like with the bronze picking out the sort of orangey colours. So that's really exciting. Um, hopefully I can make that this autumn, but you never know. And then also when I was at Sony Sunshine, I bought some Ventana Twill for Doug, which is the same fabric that I use for my red trousers and my daddy trousers. So there's a whole video about that, I'll link it. Um, yeah, so Doug has been talking about getting something green for a long time, but it's really like, cause there's so many different like tones and shades of green he just couldn't find the perfect green but we did manage to find this ventana twill at so me sunshine uh, which is dog's perfect green and i've already made that up into an ilford jacket for dog so we've got some more ethel and joan buttons here these really cool triangle ones with uh, gold leaf and black leaf on and then i did forget about buying buttons for the cuff but luckily i had these uh, ones I had just three of them left so I had a couple for the hep for the um, the cuffs so this I've never done a sleeve placket before so oops this was my first sleeve placket which I'm quite impressed with myself don't know if you're going to be able to see that very well it's all a bit creased but there you go so yeah I made this all for jacket for dark I haven't got any proper pictures of it yet I need to get him to model it uh, I only put the one pocket on because um yeah, I asked Doug what pockets he wanted and he was like, why do I want pockets? But we've got one pocket anyway. And then inside, I used bias binding for the seams because obviously I had to make lots of bias with my new bias making machine. So yeah, I think it looks really good. I'm really pleased with it. I'm very impressed with myself. Um, I'm kind of tempted to borrow this for myself because I think it will look good with a lot of my um, tops so we'll see we'll see how much uh, where Doug gets out of it to see if I can justify stealing it um, another event that I went to just last week it was this party at Fabrics Galore organized by Rosa and Marcella um, and I'll put I'll put their their handles in the description uh, so it was just, a it was a really fun social event, but they'd also managed to get really good sponsorship from uh, a bunch of sewing companies. So Fabrics Galore, where the event was hosted, uh, they had given everyone £30 to spend in the shop. Um, so when they announced this, everyone was like, oh, it was like a supermarket sweep moment where everyone was like, oh, what am I going to get? So that was really exciting. So I got da -da -da -da, this. Uh, it's a, I believe it's a Liberty dead stock where it's dead stock they're like not allowed to sort of sell it as Liberty but just from the quality um, I think it is and um, it's a bit of a smaller print for me I'm quite a sort of bold medium size print kind of girl but this I just fell in love with it the colors are so beautiful um, the print is so delicate and it just feels so nice as well it's a Tana lawn um, so it's so light, it's got a nice drape to it, it's got kind of silky feel on it as well. So I've already pre-washed this. So uh, with this my plan is to make a Friday Pattern Company patina blouse. So we'll see uh, when I get round to that. But I also, there was um, also in the goodie bag a bunch of free patterns that had been sponsored by some indie pattern companies and one of those was Maison Fauve so I bought well I, I, I guess it was it was gifted by the event uh, the Penelope uh, blouse which I don't know let me know what you think whether it would look better in like a sort of plainer fabric or you think that would be an option as well for this fabric because um, it's got these really nice like sort of pleats on the shoulders and then kind of a sort of flutter sleeve um, so that's really pretty and I definitely want to make that as well but yeah let me know what you think whether it would be better in a plainer fabric to show the details of the design 
um, and I should stick to patina with this one. Decisions, decisions. Um, and then I also got the Milano Dream Dress from uh, Melody Loth Couture and I really like the mini version of this with the long sleeves. I think it feels like quite 70s. Um, so yeah, I think that could be a really cute one to make as well. And also I got the Springer jumpsuit from So Love Patterns. Uh, so I haven't, I don't think I've ever made a jumpsuit. So yeah, that'll be fun. I thought maybe I could make it for this wedding that we're going to next year because the bride, Emily, really loves a jumpsuit. So she'll appreciate that. Um, yeah, I think because it's quite fitted, I'll definitely need to do twirls for that. But um, yeah. So that's, that was this Fabrics Galore party. I'll put in a picture as well. There was loads of amazing sewing people there and there are people that I've known online for ages and I finally got to meet them in person, um, including Jess from So What If I Sew. Um, so that was really good, that was really fun. Um, oh, I haven't even told you yet about what I've been sewing for like the last 10 months. Um, so yeah, it kind of feels like I've been doing less sewing because I've been kind of working on the stash hub stuff but I, I'm gonna go through it and I think it is actually more than I think so obviously I've got to be repping stash hub and it is a really good way to see what you've made and not have to like go back through your own Instagram so I made this hoodie for my mum which is the chalk and notch page hoodie that turned out really cute and um, that was a fabric from Jenny Stitches that I got through in a haystack there was because it's a um, they do discounts but yeah, I made this sweater for Doug, which he loves. Um, yeah, I, I think originally the plan was to get him the perfect green to make, make another sweater, but um, we couldn't find that in a jersey. I did make a Christmas dress. Don't know, I haven't got a picture of me wearing it, um, but I'll see if I can put one in. Um, so that was in the Merchant and Mills needle cord, which I bought from the Knitting and Stitching show, I believe, um, last year. Oh, my floral loungewear set. That was when it briefly snowed in January that I went out and got that picture. Um, but I mostly just wear it inside. It's very cosy. So yeah, that's, that's going to be one of the positives about it getting colder again, that I can wear my snuggly makes. This was a black pair of Winslow collots that we was on my Make 9 the previous year. I got it done in like January of 2023. Um, but yeah, I haven't worn these much. I don't really love them. I don't know if it's because they're plain black and they feel a bit formal or whether it's the fabric as well because it's this viscose KD from the new craft house. It's quite weighty. Um, so yeah, I need to decide what to what to do with those, whether it would be cuter if I cut them off like into a shorts version or whether I should pass them on to somebody else. Um, yeah, and also I'm just not sure what to wear them with because they're very voluminous. Um, next, oh, it's actually this dress that I'm currently wearing. So I love this. This was um, a Fabric Godmother viscose linen, which I got for Christmas last year. Um, and this is the Romy Gather dress by Sew House 7. So I um, lengthened the sleeves to full length because they kind of come in the pattern to a sort of awkward mid-length like this. Um, so I lengthened them to full length and I've also, I think the skirt is more gathered than in the pattern because I just used like the full width of the fabric to use it all up. Oh, in, in February, Doug and I went to the Sewists Valentine's event hosted by Georgie of Hey So Sister um, in Scotland. So I made us matching outfits with this sort of heart print fabric from Lamazi. Um, so that was really cute. Doug loves his t-shirt. He wears it a lot. Um, oh, the next one, this one kind of was a bit of a disaster when I was cutting it out. Um, I started sewing it and then I realised I'd only cut out like the front half of the skirt and just my butt would just be out. So I don't know what I was thinking, but anyway, I, and I, and I didn't have that much fabric left. So I managed to um, cut, do, do an extra like panel of the the cloud fabric in the middle and I used up literally every scrap of fabric to make this work um, but yeah I really like how it turned out in the end that's the Helen's Closet um, what's the dress called March dress um, this one is another favorite this is a wild gown in a Lady McElroy cotton lawn 
um, so I made it a bit longer than my other wild gowns and it just yeah it's really good for like transitional season because it looks good with like boots and yeah so I'm really a big fan of that one I just love the colours in the print and it kind of reminds me of like an American road trip this my Sotis dress was my um, entry for the So Yellow Ferendo challenge that Jess, ho Jess hosts in March um, so I have made in the past like fully yellow things and I felt like it wasn't quite me and I don't really like to wet you know make things if I'm not going to wear them so yeah I bought this fabric from a local fabric shop to where I grew up which is really nice and I've got these uh, buttons from Pigeon Wishes as well that are big uh, like yellow buttercups which go really well but maybe they go too well and you can't see them but yeah that's uh, that's another one that I made um, Oh, it, another March challenge I think was sew frugal so you have to sew a free pattern um, and I also used a free uh, fabric that I'd picked up at the fabric swap in January so that was a super frugal make um, I think it's like a, the fabric was like a viscose jersey so I really struggled with doing the V neckline and getting that neat so yeah maybe I should try that pattern again in a slightly more stable knit but yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of sewing with knits. I just find it much more faffy. And also my machine likes to break when I have knit uh, fabrics. So yeah, maybe I'll just not do too much knits. I don't know. Um, <laughs> this was a patina blouse that I made uh, as a So Recreate the Look project, which is hosted by Charlene and Jen. And I was recreating this well, in the, in the, I made a blouse, but in the original it was a dress that I wore when I was probably about nine months old in the original. Um, so I had found this fabric that had, it was also a floral and it had sort of similar colours, um, although it was a bit more of a modern print. Um, so yeah, that was a really fun project to do. Uh, I, oh, I made some trousers for Doug, the Elling trousers, and I tried them on him so many times throughout the process and he was like yeah yeah they fit they fit they fit I finished them I did an amazing job on it like zip fly everything and then he was like no they're too big so I ended up giving it to my dad I don't know if my dad's worn them but I tried um this was my sagebrush and marnie top so the I tried the Marnie but it didn't fit me very well like it was too wide on the shoulders and because of the way it's got kind of princess seams I wasn't sure about how to like fix that to make it fit me because I think if I just went down a few sizes to get the shoulders right then it would have been too tight over the bust so let me know if you've got any fitting tips for the Marnie blouse but anyway I really like the idea of the like the pin tucks so I did that on the sagebrush top and I think it worked out really well um, this fabric's quite creasy so I do have to iron it but I think it's kind of good to iron it anyway just to get all the pin tucks sitting nicely um, yeah so I did the pin tucks on the sleeves as well so then they turned out quite voluminous um, but yeah so it's a look um, oh I made a, a sort of I had these two fabrics, they were both in my stash hub and I kept scrolling like my list of all my fabrics and being like oh I've got the same fabric in there twice but it wasn't the same fabric, it was just two fabrics like in very very similar colourways so I was like well maybe they're just calling to be paired together then so I went to the spring party at the new craft house and I made a, um, a Vogue pattern V8997 um, which is the first big four pattern I think that I've made and it actually the fit was so good I was really worried because a lot of people say that the sizing is really big or like they just really struggle but yeah I used um, they, this pattern had like different cup sizes so I used the D cup um, size I did a twirl and made a few adjustments but then I, I felt like I got the fit really nice um, and I really enjoyed wearing it. I think on the next one that I make, I might just bring um, the shoulders in a little bit just for personal preference to have just like a little bit more coverage at the top. But yeah, I, I was really pleased with that one. I hope I get more opportunities to wear it. Um, 
for so in June I hosted So Fruity 23 which um if you if you don't follow me on Instagram I run every year a fruit sewing challenge so you just have to sew something with a fruity theme um so I bought this fabric from Heyso Sister which has little cans of like pop on them and I made an Ashton top in retrospect I should have trusted myself from the past because in the past I made a bunch of adjustments to the Ashton but for some reason for this I decided to just go back to the original pattern and I don't think that fits me great so I don't know I need to figure out what to do with that maybe I'll keep it now I might lose some weight by next summer we'll see anyway um yeah it's really cute apart from the fact that there's like a picture one of the cartoons is of banana flavored fizzy pop and that idea <laughs> is so gross um but yeah that was really cute one oh i finally finally made my um like denim pair of danny trousers so i made my first dannies in the red ventana twill like ages ago and i worked really hard on the fit and i wear them all the time like to the point where you know when the inner thigh like gets worn out um but i fixed that by just sewing over it i got a matching thread and kind of sort of fake darned it by just sewing on the machine like one way and the other way to like reinforce it um so yeah i finally made another pair of those which i also wear loads and also the denim has got like a little bit of stretch in this one and so i just yeah they're so comfy i wear them all the time so i'm really glad that i finally got around to doing that like i didn't even bother making and make nine this year because i did so badly on it last year and i've still got half the projects left but yeah finally did that so the donny shirt from friday pattern company and i love friday pattern company patterns um and i made this with a fabric that i bought at the so sustainable fair and i also made a matching skirt which was literally just a rectangle and then I let an elastic waist to like gather it in Oh, and I did a, a, a leg slit as well. Um, so I didn't, I, I was really, really tight on the fabric and I really wanted to make the matching skirt. So I used a contrasting fabric for the facing, but um, I kind of had, hadn't had quite figured out in my brain how the facing would work. So I think if I did it again, I would have also used the contrast facing for like the rest of the collar to make it more of a feature. But I did really enjoy that. I think I probably need to size down for my next one. But I don't think that's the fault of the pattern. I think that's the fault of me because I printed it out myself on A4. I usually get A0 because sticking together is the worst. But I, um, so I think the, when I printed, I hadn't selected the right scaling option. So it just printed everything out like slightly bigger. Um, but that's my bad. Um, another co-ord, I, I think I just got in a co-ord mood this summer, is this kind of really funky, like, 80s um, style print. I think, to me, it's giving, like, dad on the beach, uh, like, where just being super embarrassing, and that was the vibe that I was going for. Um, and I made some matching shorts. That was another Helen's Closet. That was the Gilbert top. Um, and the shorts were the Dannys again. Um, but although for some reason these ones feel a little bit tighter, but maybe it's just the fabric because it's just a cotton. Um, I got that one from Jenny Stitches at the Knitting and Stitching show. The next one is a floral Roscoe blouse, which I made um, with a fabric that I bought from Boys in York. I think we definitely need to get all the southerners together and make like boys just happen in the south because or like it's basically like wilco where you can buy anything but also like craft stuff and fabric it's so good um and this fabric i bought and it was like i think it's like six pounds a meter it was really bargainous and i just was like well i have to get it then like, i wasn't i was like i'm not gonna buy anything because like my bag's already full i've got to get the train back but no i bought it um, and I made the Roscoe blouse because I was visiting my friend Natalie and that's one of her favourites. Um, I feel like I might need to size down because it's kind of like a bit baggy in the like armpit. But yeah, it, um, I really like it. I think it looks good with my, my, my red Danny pants that I'm always banging on about because I'm obsessed with them. All right, then we're into 
Barbie season. Obviously had to make something Barbie, even though I'm not really like a pink kind of person, but I had this fabric already in my stash, which was this really cute, like pastel gingham with like little love hearts in. And from all the Barbie promo, like they had, you know, the pink gingham sundress. And I was like, okay, well this needs to be a sundress. So I, I made that and I did do some twirls and quite a lot of work on the fitting. And I think the fit is, is really good, but I, there's uh, some things that I would tweak on my next one, like the side seam, I think, uh, I think it's too far forwards. So I just need to like adjust the pattern pieces to get the side seam like in the right place. I think it's fine, like nobody else would notice, but it, it's a thing that bugs me. Um, but yeah, we're probably coming out of sundress season now, so maybe next year. Um, but yeah, that's a quick run through of everything that I have been making for the last 10 months. Um, I kind of feel like this is going to be a long video, but I think actually I'm just going to keep it all as one and you can always, you know, take a break if you get fed up of me. Um, yes so next we'll talk about what am i working on now so it's now september um there's quite a lot of challenges and events going on in september so depending on when i get this video uploaded maybe i'm just about to go to the big sew off maybe i'm already there like right now maybe it's like just happened but yeah so the big sew off is a charity fundraiser event raising money for MIND which is a mental health charity and I'm going to be at the New Craft House HQ, um, the sewing hub. So I'm going to be there all night sewing. So I've brought a, like I've already cut out a bunch of projects so I'm ready to go. So I've got the April top by You Made My Day Patterns, the April dress by Forget Me Not Patterns the SD top from Tilly and the Buttons. So I've got a couple of kids dresses, which is the Elsie pattern by Made Easily Patterns. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm bringing. We'll see how it goes, like how much I managed to get sewn up and how much I'm asleep or just chatting. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I'll put the link down below for my fundraiser if you want to get involved and help the cause. Um, I think it's going to be really fun. So if you want to watch some of that live, if you get up at 3am and you're like, I know what I want to do. I want to watch Yvette have a breakdown in the middle of the night trying to do some sewing. Um, there is going to be loads of live streams on the Big Sew Off Instagram page. So I'll see if I can put a link to that in as well. So another sort of charity related um event that's happening throughout september is project dresser girl so this is that is um hosted by maddie so so i'll link to her intro video down below i keep pointing i'm a bit rusty i'm just getting used to what i'm doing guys um so it's basically the theme of the challenge is to sew a dress for a girl in extreme poverty. So I think there's gonna be so many like cute dresses. It's gonna be amazing. Um, so I was asked, do you wanna take part? And I was like, yes, this will help me kind of get back into my YouTube life. So I've got a video which will be coming out on the 29th of September. So it's probably gonna be one of the last ones, um, but at least I won't have to explain what the challenge is because hopefully everyone will know by then. Let me show you the fabrics that I have got for the challenge. So my mum came with me to help me choose fabrics because after I'd agreed to do it, I realised I don't know a single child. My, the, the youngest person I know is my cousin who's 16 and a boy. So yeah, my, so my mum came with me because I am a sucker for florals and apparently no, um, you know, pink zebras is more where it's at. So yeah, I've got some, some cute fabrics and also some scraps that I'm going to be using up uh, as well so the LC pattern is really good for like using up smaller cuts of fabric um, so that will be really fun so stay tuned um, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see my project dresser girl reveal at the end of uh, the month what else have I got going on so there's going to be a uh, Instagram live with me and elephant in my handbag sewing shop we're going to be chatting about sewing tips they've got this tips and tricks series so I'm going to be talking about organizing your stash and 
um, yeah, how Stash Hub works and stuff. So that's at 8 p.m. on Wednesday, the 6th of September, uh, if you want to join in that. Um, so hopefully that'll be fun and let me know if you've got any questions as well that you want to know. Maybe I can talk about them on the live. So finally, what is up next for me? So I am going to be at the Lamazi Fabrics Open Day, uh, which is on the 24th of September. And I'm planning to hopefully meet up with a few sewists for lunch as well. Um, so Mel and I hosted a sewists picnic um, in August. So we're trying just to sort of get more like FaceTime with some, you know, sewing people in the real world. So we started Sorry So. So I live in Woking. Um, so if you live kind of in the vicinity, um, drop me a message and um, yeah, maybe you can come to one of our events. But yeah, the, the one for September is we're going to venture. I think it's slightly outside of Surrey, but anyway, um, there's not a lot of sewing stuff going on in Surrey. So I think we will have to do some adventures, but that's fine. So we're going to go to the Lamazi Fabrics Open Day in Horsham. Um, so that's going to be really fun. And yeah, I need to see what the weather's going to be like, whether we brave it for another picnic or whether I need to book somewhere. But yeah, so... Um, There'll be details about that on my Instagram page, Blossom Sandwich. So that is one of the events that's coming up. There's also a couple of projects that I'd like to make. So I would like to do my first foray into bra making. So one of the patterns that I got from in a, my Inner Haysack subscription, which is really good, by the way, if you are like want to discover new uh, sewing pattern companies or just kind of get a little bit outside of your comfort zone um, with always making the same patterns. So I got the Epervier bralette pattern from the Inner Haystack subscription and I bought a kit uh, from the New Craft House. So I think, I'm, I think I need some fold over elastic, but then I've got everything I need. So I'm really interested to try that. My bra size came out like so different from what I buy ready to wear so I'm really curious as to like how it's going to fit and because I, I find it difficult to buy bras I find bras really uncomfy um so yeah maybe this will be like my first sort of taste of like underwear making and maybe I'll get really into it um so we'll see if how that goes um and I also would really like to join in with the So Safari challenge that Sarah at Super Bales is hosting. Um, so I've got this super cute patch. Let's see. Do, do, do. Here he is. So it reminds me of the rainbow fish, if anyone's um, a 90s kid who had that book at school. Um, so I asked Sarah and she said she's not discriminating. All creatures of the land, air and sea are allowed in the So Safari. So I'm thinking of making a um, Eloisa... Uh, it's going to be a dress or a top. I need to see how far the fabric's going to go. And I might put this little guy right here, front and centre. Um, so that will be really cute. I just... Um, so the Eloisa is what I made for the um, Sewists Valentine's Day. And I think it will be really nice, but I just need to like take out some of the length above the bust. So I need to do that adjustment and yeah, then I can give my little fishy a home. Um, so moving into October, I will be at the knitting and stitching show. Um, we're not going to have our own stand for Stash Hub yet, but just because it's yeah it's really difficult to have a stand when you don't have like a physical product to sell so we did appear at the um so sustainable fair which i think was in april um and that was really good we got to chat to loads of amazing people but i think it's just harder to get the concept across like when you don't have physical stuff that people can like interact with um so yeah we i'm gonna be there i'm gonna help louise on ethel and joan um, I'm going to be there all the days. It's the 5th to the 8th of October. So yeah, if you see me, come and say hi. Um, and yeah, I'll try not to be awkward. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's basically it. That's what's coming up. That's what I might make. Um, but yeah, let me know like how you guys are all doing. Like, I'm sorry I just ghosted you for 10 months. Um, if you enjoyed seeing me back on YouTube, please like and subscribe if you are new here, if you haven't already. Um, otherwise, I might just disappear for another year. 
I'm, I'm only kidding but um, yeah I, I'm, I'm really glad to be back and yeah let me know what you want to see from me coming up um, yeah so thanks so much for watching guys I, sorry it was a bit of a long one but yeah lots to catch up on and hopefully I'll see you soon um, I'll definitely at least see you in a few weeks at the end of the month for Project Dresser Girl reveal I've already made two of my dresses and they're already so cute so yeah I shall see you soon guys uh, thanks for watching bye